AI applications, right? So now with the JavaScript, you're standing in as a web guy and as a mobile guy. I believe that's fun. Because now in the mobile in the mobile ecosystem with your React Native, you can write a native app that works for both Android and iOS. And then with your the same JavaScript, you can write for front end using the whole lot of front end um, frameworks and libraries like React. React is a library, and then we have frameworks like Angular. We have frameworks like Vue, right? All of these handles the front end. Then going down to the back end, that's where we have the Node.js. And Node itself has a framework called Express, right? So just with one language, you're writing both. You are standing in as a mobile guy and as a web guy, a full stack guy. It's amazing, trust me. And it's so it's so sweet so that the language is very simple to learn. But sorry, but at the bootcamp, you I think uh, people will go to their own specialty now. Sorry? But the idea is at the book camp, everybody will now migrate at the point. So we we'll go for back end. Or is there is there is there is there, is there room for okay. stack? Yeah, at the boot camp, you know, we run both at the boot camp, um, we run both um, mobile and uh, web. I believe the coordinator must have briefed us on that. So there are, I know some people enrolled to be mobile developers. Then some people enrolled to be web developers. So the web development, okay. I think the coordinator is here. He can still address that. Hello, welcome, sir. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, yeah, I want to answer that question. But can that person? Can you rephrase that question for code? What was the question again? Okay. Um. um what I was trying to say that at the boot camp, um, I think the the idea is. If you get to a point, everybody will now maybe go to their own stack, like some group of backend, some group of frontend, or is there a room for someone that wants to do both full stack, frontend, and backend? Maybe you do a little bit. Okay. All right. So um, I want to believe everybody has uh, what's the particular course they put in for. So, for instance, if you put in for mobile development, obviously you are learning mobile, right? And if you put in for web development, you are learning web. But in the course of the journey, some people will now realize that, oh, look here, I don't think uh, I can cope with the entire full stack. I think I love front end more than back end. So some people will decide, oh, I want to stay with front end now. They will be learning front end all through, you know, their six months duration. And some will feel like, oh, I don't like design. I think I'm good with the back end. And then they will continue their own journey for the whole six months with the back end track, right? Why some people will be doing mobile. But even as a mobile guy, your journey still starts with the web people. You still have to learn the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Most importantly, JavaScript, because JavaScript is like. Uh... We can't hear you, sir. Oh, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Can, any, can everybody hear me? Oh, I've been talking to myself. Yes. Yes, we, we, can hear we were you. hearing you, but there was a break we, from where you said okay. something. All right, so, yeah. okay, all right. So what I'm saying is that um, you have the liberty to stay with uh, whatever your strength can actually accommodate, right? Some people, their strength can eventually accommodate a full stack journey, and then you are learning full stack. Full stack in the sense that you are learning both the uh, front and the back, right? And some people will still be like, oh, I think I'm good with the front end. So let me just stay with the front end to the rest of the, you know, uh, of the duration of the program. And some will be like, okay, I think I'm not really good with design. I am good with the logic. Let me stay with the back end. So we don't, we don't actually force people to continue the track on the front end journey, right? I mean, on a full stack journey. You can look at yourself, examine yourself, know where your strength lies. And that's the one. Uh, that's one thing about you know development, right? You can, we are, of course we have some people who are exceptionally good. They will find both front end and back end easy for them. And of course there are people who will not find it too easy for them. So some people will find the front end easy. Some will find the back end easy. So it depends on what aligns with your ability, your, with your capability, right? And then for the mobile people, people who put in for mobile, the you know, journey starts from. The web class right because you have to learn javascript as well right 
Don't forget this foundational class is just to prepare people who are extremely, you know, complete beginners, right? Just to introduce you to uh, the centers and everything. So everything doesn't look new, doesn't look like we're writing, writing Arabic when you get to the bootcamp. I hope I'm communicating, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so for the mobile guy, you have to learn, you still have to learn um, what's it called, JavaScript, because JavaScript is like, um, how do I call it now? Well, I like to call JavaScript the foundation of, you know, <laughs> programming, <laughs> because it's cut across on almost every other, you know, languages, right? There's JavaScript in React, there's JavaScript in Node.js, there's JavaScript in most of all the front-end frameworks, right? View, uh, in fact, React Native, right? As a mobile guy, you want to learn React Native, there's JavaScript almost everywhere. So, so once you learn JavaScript and you understand JavaScript very well, uh, you are on the, on the right path. <laughs> You're on the right path. You can, if you understand JavaScript very, very well on your own, you can pick up React Native, you know, if you are, that's serious. You can pick up the admitting for your own and start learning on your own. The only difference is the same type, the same logic, right? So, so that's it. So if you put it for mobile, you are still going to be with the web development class, right? Learning JavaScript with them. So after that, you learn React with them also. So after that, then you separate, you go to your own mobile class. And as for the web people, they continue their journey to Node.js, which is the back end, right? So that's the track. I hope I've been able to communicate with Everybody yes, uh, for code, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, Star Samuel, you can continue. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, guys, let's begin this amazing journey. I'm super, super excited. I don't know if someone else is excited. Me, can I ask a question? Yeah, please go on. Uh, my question is, like being a full stack, is it still the same as um, a software engineer? I didn't catch that. Hello? Yeah, you said being a I software said being engineer. A stack, is it still the same as, yeah, is it also the same as a full stack? Being a full stack engineer, is it the same? If being a software, a full stack developer, is it the same as, as a software engineer? engineer? Is that, was that your yeah, question? that's my question. Yeah. Being, being a front-end yes, yes. engineer alone is, is you being a, a software engineer. Well, who is an engineer in the first place? And who is a software guy? You know, when you're talking about um, software, you know what the software is. I don't need to explain that part to you, you know, right? Right? Yes. So, you know what? And yes, I, okay, I just wanted us to, um, to begin with this guy, Aristotle. He said that the only way to learn to code is to write a lot of code. Do you believe this? Hello, guys. Do you believe? Do you believe this? I don't believe it. You don't believe it? Yes, boss. I that believe. Is exactly what I believe. Mean. Okay. Yes, Okay, all right. Quick one. All right. Okay, quick one. Let's. Um, sorry. Um, that person's audio is, is trying to distract us a little. Could you kindly mute yourself? I don't know. Is that is that? Yeah. Okay. Let me just um give you um before we proceed. There's something I really want to discourage us from. Being stuck in tutorial zone. I don't know if you can hear me being stuck in tutorial zone. Try as much as possible not to get stuck in that zone, right? The zone whereby you just watch tutorials all day. When you finish, by the time you're done watching, you literally cannot implement anything you've watched. So that maybe a day after you keep asking yourself, what did I even watch? So now you have to look for another tutorial to watch. Yes, on this journey, trying to learn, coming up as a beginner, from my own point of view, right, right, you notice that, um, and still from experience, you you observe that there are a whole lot of resources online. There are plenty of them online. A whole lot of YouTube tutorials. Everybody trying to teach you in his own way, and all a whole lot of them. 
So it, sometimes you get in that zone whereby after watching this person tutorial, you jump on this person tutorial, you discover that, oh, maybe this person is trying to implement different things. And you, now you get stuck at that point. So what am I supposed to do then? Which one is right? Then this, there's this very bad syndrome that takes place, imposter syndrome. Then at that point, you start asking yourself, okay, what exactly am I even supposed to learn? Then you see yourself finding yourself jumping from one tutorial to another. I believe, for me, I feel that's where this code comes into play, that the only way to learn to code is to write a lot of code. Yes, I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch tutorials. I'm not saying you shouldn't look for tutorials out there. Remember when we started this program, one of the tools we outlined was internet. And we said the importance of that internet is to enable you to do research. So it's as good as enable you get information online, right? So it's not about every time going online to copy code and dump them, watching one tutorial, keeping it side by side and trying to copy exactly what that person is saying. If the person type A, you type A, type B, you type B, you type C. This is like you trying to just copy someone else. Like it's not you being you. So in as much as you're learning, you should try as well to write a lot of these codes. Like try to imagine things and try to build things around your imagination, right? I don't know if that makes sense. But now when you're watching a tutorial, you could watch it halfway in between, right? And maybe like 30 minutes into the tutorial. Um, and then you can pause and even minimize the video you're watching or wherever you're watching your tutorial, your classes, and then try to replicate. Now try to type out those codes without looking at what the person or pausing the video to copy the person's code or something, right? that you try to write those codes by yourself. And if possible, if the person is trying to implement product A, you can ask you from your own end, try to implement product B or product C, or try to just go one step further in um, beyond the A, the person just um, try to write out, right? So write, just try to write as much as you can. That's for me, I feel that's what this code is trying to tell us to do, right? That you should write a lot of code. That's the only way you can learn. And sincerely, that's the only way you can learn. If you just get stuck in the angle of just keep watching tutorials over and over and over, I don't think it's going to make sense that way, right? So we try as much as possible, right? You may not get it right from the onset, but that shouldn't be some a discouragement, right? Rather, to me, it should tell you to learn more, to do more, to be able to apply more. So cultivate the habit of writing. Yes, learn as well. Research, watch tutorials, but do try as much as possible not to get stuck in the tutorials zone. I hope I was able to communicate. I hope I was able to talk to someone, right? Now, how do yeah, you hello, start? Hello, Sam, sorry, sorry for cutting you short. Huh? Hello. Okay, Sam. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, I just want to buttress your points, right? Uh, on that uh, quote. I, I want to believe everybody can hear me, right? Are you guys yes. hearing me? Okay, okay, all right. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Um, I think he's talking, but I can hear him. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, I don't know. Did we lost him? Hello, Mr. Banji, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Is it my network? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, I think maybe it is his network then, because I can't hear him. Don't write that code yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Okay, you sir. Not, you will not uh, get it. Sorry, so the sorry, only sir, way to we, write the code. Sorry, sir. We, we stopped hearing you at some program, point. Is to write that code yourself. So after leaving tutorial, this foundational class, go back and practice all these things on your own, because that's the only way you can master it. Right. In essence, the courts emphasize the importance of practice. Right. If you read, if you, if you read that, if you read minutes without codes very well, it emphasizes the importance of practice. Right.
That's true. So can I hear him again? Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, Mr. Banj, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Okay. All right. Why we wait for him to come back? Hello, Mr. Banj. Hello, Mr. Banja, you see there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so we stop hearing you completely at some point. Maybe his network is bad. Hello, guys. I will see you together. Yes, we can hear you, but we are not hearing him. Okay. Hello, Mr. Banjo. Are you there? Yes. Yes. I think maybe he's on. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's let's proceed then. Okay. So the, the next question is: Somebody may ask. Hello. Hello. I hope it's not my network, sir. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so that means it's from. The yeah, it's from the network. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Yes, sir. I think my, my network today is quite bad. I don't know why. You just keep bouncing me in and out. What? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. But your screen stopped sharing. Yeah. I, in fact, I lost you guys at some point. I had to connect again. Uh, let me Let me share back my screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, yes. so we said we are talking about um, if you need to install JavaScript, but for the most part of it, I say you do not need to install JavaScript because JavaScript is just a programming language for the web. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Yeah, so JavaScript is basically a programming language for the web. So you do not need to install JavaScript to be able to make use of JavaScript. You don't need to install JavaScript. So writing code. Now, there are basically two ways um, we could go about this uh, writing code, right? You can literally write your JavaScript code in the browser. The browser has a console that enables you to write your code. So that's why I say that the console is the place where your JavaScript code runs. Basically, this is where your JavaScript code runs. And Google Chrome. So please, can you zoom it? Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh no, 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 no. This, not this. Okay, so Google Chrome V8 engine, right? You know, Google Chrome has an engine. That's a V8 engine. It changes your JavaScript code to machine code. It's that engine. Is that engine on the browser that enable, you know, basically the computer, what the computer understands is the machine language, right? 
But JavaScript is more or less, it's a high level programming language. You write it as though you are speaking English. Basically what you use is English words. Not like you're using any funny combinations, just at some very few instances whereby you can include some characters, right? But basically it's like, um, we call it, a, it's a high level programming language in the sense that it's like, it's using human understandable language. So now that V8 engine enables um, the browser to understand what we are writing. So we say that's what we're saying here that um, the V8 engine changes your JavaScript code to machine code. And that's what allows you to write your JavaScript code in the Google Chrome console, right? Now, um, talking about comments, um, yeah, let's just go through this at some point, then we'll, we'll go into the Chrome browser and then we'll try to look at the practical side of everything we've done, right? So then remember why we're working with HTML, we talked about comment. I don't know if you still remember that. The same for JavaScript, we can add comments to our code, even in JavaScript, right? And comments basically, they are just very important to uh, make code more readable and to leave remark. I think um, when we're talking about um, code, no, sorry, when we're talking about comments, I highlighted that it's just an opportunity for you to write a description of what you're about to do next or what a particular uh, block of code is trying to achieve. It's like you just saying, okay, if anybody jump on your code base um, is and going through your comment, you understand that, okay, yeah, this is what you intend to achieve next, right? So, um, I don't, I'll share some of my, I'll share my full screen and then we'll see some, I think I did share my screen and showed us um, some codes I wrote and how I was able to go about my comments, right? They basically, in fact, they help even you, the programmer, because there are sometimes you write certain codes, you come back to it one or two, three months after, you'll be asking yourself, ah, what was I trying to do here? But with comments now, when you read through the comments, you understand that, oh, this particular function or this particular block of code, this is what it's trying to do here and here. Oh, this is what I was trying to think. This was what I was trying to achieve, right? So, so and in JavaScript, those comments basically, there are unexecutable lines of code, right? JavaScript does not execute comment part of our code. And in JavaScript, uh, we use this forward slash here, right? In writing our comments. And we have, um, for HTML, we, we, HTML has just only one pattern of writing comments, right? Then we'll go back, to, we'll go and look at how all these things are done practically, right? But for JavaScript, we have multiple ways, or we have basically two ways of writing comments. We have the single line comment, which you can just easily donate with these two forward slash, as we can see here. This is the first comment, just with this two forward slash, it shows that it's a comment, right? And then we have the multiple line comment. And for multiple line comment, you use the forward slash and the asterisk. Then your comment goes between this, um, these symbols, the forward slash and the asterisk sign, right? And then when you're talking about programming language, every language has its own syntax. And when I mean syntax, it basically means um, the pattern or the format of structuring its own code, right? How you go about doing things in a particular language, right? The way I may say letter um, A, or the way I may say com in my language, or the way I may write com in my own dialect, that's my own language, is different from the way maybe um, another person will write the same com in his own dialect. That's just how programming languages work. Although we are, if I say com or I write com, we are all referring to the same thing, right? Maybe, okay, a Yoruba so man may write com differently. The words, the alphabets may be different from the way a house someone, for instance, may write com and will still be different from the way um, an Igbo person will write com. That's, we're talking about syntax here, right? The combination of alphabets. But at the end of the day, these three persons are trying to achieve the same goal. That's why maybe if you're good with a particular programming language, jumping on another language becomes a bit easier. Or what you need to understand is, understand how that language, the new language you want to pick up, how the syntax looks like. So JavaScript also has its own syntax, right? All programming languages have their own syntax. 
So that's what we're trying to say here, that JavaScript is a programming language and like other programming language, it has its own syntax as well. And if we do not write the syntax that JavaScript understand, it will raise different type of errors. For example, maybe I write com in Yoruba and then I give it to a Hausama to read, you know, there's going to be problem. You understand, right? That's what we're trying to buttress here, that if we do not write a syntax that JavaScript understand, we do not write com in the way JavaScript understands, is going to raise or flag an error, right? Then in talking about adding JavaScript to web pages, don't worry, we're going to practice all this. I just want to run over this slide to a certain point so that we'll look at the practical part of it as well. So um, in adding JavaScript, just like, um, just like um, CSS, remember when we we're looking at CSS, we said you can write your CSS on the line, that's inline CSS. You can write your CSS in that same file, that's maybe the header section within the body section. That's internal CSS, that's the CSS being present in the file, maybe in the head section, right? Then we talked about external CSS. That's you now writing your CSS file on a different .css sheet and then now linking it to the HTML file. It worked the same way for JavaScript, right? Here too, you can also have inline scripts. You can have internal scripts. You can have external scripts. And then you can have multiple external scripts. Yes, even for CSS, you can have multiple external scripts for CSS and then connect them together, right? Then you can as well have multiple external scripts for CSS and then find a way to link all of them together, right? Then, okay, um, then I will go into the browser and look at this internal script. We'll look at the external scripts. And uh, yeah, we'll look at the multiple external scripts. Okay. Let me stop sharing these and share my full screen so that we'll do some practical work. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to share my full screen. Okay, guys, I believe you can see my full screen now. Right? Can you, can you all see my full screen now? Yes. Okay, that's great. All right. So as usual, we're going to be making use of our Git bash. So with my Git bash, I want to navigate and open the IT skills folder we created. Just a quick one, I want to be sure where I am. PWD, I can check his desktop where I am. Yes, here is desktop, so I can CD into my desktop. So I'm currently in my desktop. What's on my desktop? LS. Okay, this is the IT skills folder on my desktop, so I can navigate into IT skills center folder. So I'm currently inside IT skills center folder, as you can see, right? So I can see what's there. Yeah, we remember our YouTube um, um, projects, our Facebook projects, our Google project, right? This was the first project we did on YouTube. All right, so this my screen is, screen is becoming clumsy. I can clear it. Then I want to create a new folder. I will say um, mkdr make directory and then I'll call that um, um, JavaScript JS. Let me call it JS class one. Class one. So if I do LS, Hi. we Hi. can. Sorry? Mr. Samuel, sorry. Okay. Please, just a quick question. You are, you always go through Gibash to open up your VS code. Yes. Can we go through the normal GUI? Is there any reason why you are always using Gibash? Or can one just open, just click the 
icon of the VS code and he opens up and you do whatever okay. you want. Okay, if I get your clarity, why you always go through this use... route? Okay, yeah, basically there are two why reasons you always why I use Git bash, yes. There are two reasons. If I'm giving you reasons why I'm doing this, there are two basic reasons I can give you. One is I want you to get familiar with using this. Two, it is faster this way for me. Trust me, the time it will take you to go and right click, select new folder, folder, rename. I've already written MKDR and created my folder. And then for you as an engineer, getting conversant working with um, the terminal, Man, it's skills you will really appreciate as time goes on. Thank you. Because with when by the time you know, subsequently when you start working with other libraries and frameworks, you may have to install libraries. Let's say you're working with React, there will be some libraries you need to install, right? And that still brings you it will bring you back to your terminal. So getting used to using terminal, it's an add-on, right? So basically, I just want us to get acquainted and working with uh, the terminal, and then it's faster. Trust me, it's really faster. I don't know if uh, that makes sense. Yeah, it actually does. Okay, it's actually faster, and you need it going forward, right? Because there will be okay now. Um, remember when we we're trying to push our work to GitHub, we didn't do any drag and drop. We had to use the terminal to push our work to GitHub. So imagine not knowing how to use the your terminal. And then beside that terminal part, there will be times where maybe you may even need to connect to an online server, and then it will still take you back to the terminal. So imagine getting very confident and working with your term, terminal from the beginning stage, right? It's going to do a lot of good, bro. So can we go on? Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, so we are currently in the IT skills folder, and uh, like we did LS. LS, these are the folders we have here. So this is the folder I want to navigate into. JS class one, right? So I'll easily do my CD, JS. Okay, now a quick shortcut. Instead of writing JS, underscore class to the end i could just press tab on my keyboard and you see it has automatically completed that word for me i hit enter currently i'm in the folder here right so now here i can create an html file i can easily say okay touch index dot html dot html i've created that file already touch let me call this main dot js now this is a javascript file js js right now i've created these two files i can now do code dot to open my vs code yes my vs code is bouncing now these are the two files i created there right these were the two files but before we launch into that files let me go to my browser and show us something real quick remember we said that um the v the chrome v8 8 engine enables us to write javascript even on the browser right so now let me come to my browser and see how I can use the browser in writing my JavaScript code. Right, let me open a blank space. I just, I'm right clicking and when you click on this inspect, let me open this guy wide enough. You see this is your console here. Trust me, it will get to a point where console will be your best friend, your very best friend because this is the weapon of every developer, right? Because this is where you can easily catch all the errors you're making on your web page. You can easily see where you are, right? Now we we'll get to make use of it often and you'll see how um, it's being used as time goes on, right? So now talking about this guy, um, remember the console has a lot of methods you can make use of. Methods are like, um, let me use, Methods, method, 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 method. I want to use a real life scenario to explain what methods are. Yes, they are like um, actions. They are like actions. For instance, maybe um, if a footballer is, uh, is in the pitch and they ask him kick, he knows that what he's to do is to shoot the ball. If they ask him dribble, 
He knows that he's not shooting the ball, but he's dribbling his opponent. He wants to bypass his opponent. If they ask him pass, he knows that what he's supposed to do is push this ball to the, your next teammate, right? Those are like methods, push, sorry, pass, dribble, shoot. So the console as well has different methods. Like you see things like console, when I say dot log, it means you understand that log, it's like, show me what the person just typed here. Now, let's say maybe I say something like, uh, um, welcome to JS class. Now, it just printed this now, welcome. It's now, it's like you trying to print the message. Maybe if you're coming from um, a word of Python, it's like you're using print. So this is like console.log, you're trying to print to the console, log a message onto the console, right? And then even in the console, like I said, you can write, even write your code, you could do things like const name equal to um, Samuel, Samuel. And then I could say something like um, console.log, console.log, um, hello. Okay, let me, let me, let me not go that out. Hello, space, plus name. Now you see, hello somewhere. Remember I printed hello and name. Now it's like, um, this is what we call variables. Variables, we don't worry, we're going to look at everything bit by bit. Today is more or less like an introduction to this JavaScript class. Um, so we're, uh, we're looking at, this is what we call variables. And when you're talking about variables, for instance, now, I'm a human being and I was given the name Samuel. So let's say somebody just walk into the office where I am right now and say someone. Definitely my attention will be drawn to that person because my name was called. So now my name was called. My name is somewhere. It means I am somewhere, right? So this somewhere is like a variable. So, so that wherever I am and somebody mentioned somewhere, my attention is drawn because that's like the word I am being, the word that is attached to me as a human being. So now if you look at this, this is a variable. If I say name, somewhere is going to come. It's like this name somewhere was attached to this word so that whenever you call this word name, this somewhere now comes in. So that whenever, now bringing to me now the, the, I know, the analogy I was given before, so that whenever somebody says somewhere, the human being, which is me, would now be drawn to that person that called that word. So somewhere here is now like a variable that is identical to this human being that, that I am. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Great. Yes. Uh, Great. So when you're referring to variables, basically that's what variables are. So when I say variables, it means we are trying to give something a name. I could come here and say something like, okay, const. Um, no, we're going to look at all these const and all that val, let, and all of them. We we'll look at all of them in details, right? So maybe something like I can come here and say const age ninety-eight, right? So it means this number 98 is being attached to this word age. So that if I call age now, you see 98 will come, right? Let's say I do something like console.log. Remember this console.log is a method. The log is a method and I've explained what method is, right? Console.log age, you see what's coming up is 98 because the number 98 was assigned to this word, age. Age, in this case, is a variable. 
And this is my browser. Remember all of this thing is my browser. I can write even a big function here, right? But are we going to be making use of the browser to write in our code? The answer is no. Remember, one of the tools we mentioned why, um, um, when we started our class was code editor. And our explanation then we say it's like the same way you use the notebook to write your notes, to structure all your notes for classes. We use the code editors in writing or structuring all our code. I believe that makes sense, right? And then we said that there are pie of um, code editors out there. We have VS Code, we have Notepad++, we have Atom, there are plenty of them, right? Then I now recommended VS Code, which is what I've been using, is what I've been using for a very long time. And I gave you reasons why um, I love using VS Code, right? So basically me coming here, I just wanted to also show you that, remember we said JavaScript is a web, uh, it's a web-based language, the web understands it. And then the V8 engine enables um, the browser to understand what we are writing. That was why, okay, I said, okay, let me illustrate it here, right? But from our slide, we look at the different ways where this um, JavaScript can be written. We talked about inline, we talked about um, internal, we talked about external and multiple, right? So let's go back to our VS code, right? And then try to see how we can as well write it in our VS code. So using our terminal, we created a folder called JS class one. And then we also use our terminal to create an index and a, a main.js file, right? Okay, not like, yeah. Now, if I come to this main.js, before I connect it, um, I just want to show something real quick. Now here I can as well write um, my code. JS, this is a JavaScript file. So the extension is .js, remember for HTML, .html, for CSS, .css, right? For JavaScript, we have the .js, right? I can come here and say, okay, name equal to Samuel. Samuel, I can say um, const occupation, const occupation, I can say full stack, Full stack dev, right? Then I can now say, okay, console.log, console.log, uh, um, I could say something like hello. Hello plus. This plus, then we're going to walk through, um, I'll walk you through, we'll understand all what this guy is trying to do. Hello plus, let me add space. And then I can say, okay, um, name plus. And all this code I'm writing there, there's actually a better way of writing this thing, right? I'm just going through this route so that we'll, um, we'll understand everything. Hello, name, full stop. I heard you are a plus a occupation. Now, if I want to run this code, I can as well use my terminal here. Let me use this terminal. And then I have node main.js. Can you see my code is printed out here? Hello, Samuel. I heard you are a full stack dev. Now, this is me using node to run my code now, right? And then we'll still get to understand all that part. For now, I believe most of us do not have Node, node installed on our system. I don't know. But for those a few that have this, how you can use Node to run this code as well, right? I'm just trying to show us different ways you can actually run this code. Remember, we went to the browser, right? Then as well, I can integrate this, connect this to my VS code. This is my, sorry, to my um, HTML file. This is my HTML file. Let's write the boilerplate. 
This is the boiler plate uh, correct uh, um, title to be JS class. JS class. Then to connect um, our JavaScript. Yes, a quick one here now. You will see some tutorials. You see where some people connect their JavaScript file in the head section. Scripts and connect it here. Scripts. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Scripts, 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 scripts. Don't mind. I'm trying to use a shortcut. Yeah. Scripts. You see some people connect the file here in the head section, right? You see some other tutorials connected in the body section towards the end. Script, sorry. They connect it main dot main dot js main dot js. So you see, I've connected it into. Let me comment the one in the. Let's begin with the one. In, in the body section, comment it. Let me just write one tag here so that we know there were actually five. Welcome to introduction to JS. JS. So let me open this file with my live server. Open with my live server. Open up. Yep. Welcome to introduction to JS. So let me check my. Inspect console. Can you see that message? Welcome. Hello, Samuel. I heard you are a full stack dev. It's coming from main JS line three. Let's go and check that out. It's coming from main JS line three. This is my JavaScript connected to this index file, and it's in the head section. It works. Let me comment it, the one in the head. Let me use the one in the body section. Let me refresh this page. You still see it. It still works. <clears throat> now the question will be, so what am I supposed to do? Yes, ideally, the reason there are reasons why um, there's the reason why you should put it below here and not in the head section. Not like you can put it in the head section. You can put it in the actual section and make use of it. But it's when you're writing a very big application that you know the impact of putting it in the head section. Remember your codes ideally run from top, from the top to the bottom, right? So by the time your code is run from line one, line two, line three, you encounter this file. It now leaves this page, this page and go to this file and read this file from top to bottom. And meanwhile, this one is also running you may encounter errors down the line, but there's still a solution to this, right? There's a solution to this. I don't want to take us so far, but for now, know that um, there's a solution to this. If you want to put it in the head section, there are attributes you can specify here. There's something called, uh, I don't want to, why am I trying to go far? Okay, so for now, right, um, for the beginning, just for the introduction of this class, try to put your JavaScript code in the body section at the bottom. So that by the time, basically why is that um, when your the browser is running your code, it runs from top to bottom. So it read line one, read line two, read line, by the, before it gets to your JavaScript file, and then it leaves this particular file completely and go to read the code in this file. It has already done reading your entire HTML file. Then it can just come back and implement everything, right? But if it is here, it can leave your file completely and may not, before it comes back here, the codes below must have run through it. Okay, let me try to paint a real life scenario. If maybe I'm becoming too technical and saying rubbish. Um, okay, yeah. It's just like, let's say you want to cook noodles. Good, yes. You want to prepare noodles. You want to prepare, um, yes, you want to prepare noodles. Then you know you know that preparing noodles. I may not be a good chef. Please, um, the girls on the call don't hold me responsible for what I'm about to say. Let's say um, you don't mostly in trying to prepare noodles. You don't need to put too much water. 
And people prepare it differently, right? I remember when I was one of my friends, uh, if you want to prepare in nodules, you first of all put the pot on fire, put little water, allow the water to boil to some extent. Just get warm, boil to some extent before you now breaks the nodules and put it inside. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right direction though, but now I'm going to use his speaker scenario. Okay, what if this guy now puts small water on fire and then he, there's no nodules in the house? He now left the house to go and buy nodules. By the time he's back, remember the, the water was just small. What's going to happen? Probably the water must have dried off. And if there's nobody to turn off the gas, there could be, uh, there could be consequences. Yes, bringing it back to a code. Imagine that you put your code in the head section. Now, the code runs from line one on reaching line eight. It now leaves this file. This is like this guy leaving the small um, water on the gas to go and buy nodules. Now, because when he gets to this point, he's going to leave this file completely to go and buy nodules, to go and read what is in the JS file. But that does not mean this file is not running through. When he left the house to go and get nodules, that does not mean that he turned off the gas. The gas was still on, the water was still boiling and probably drying off. By the time he comes back, that's by the time you're done, the, um, the browser is done reading the JS file and back to the HTML file. There's possibility that by citing the, you know, uh, the nodules um, scenario, the water must have dried off. And then there could be consequences. The pulp, the house will cut fire or something. There could be some certain consequences, right? So by the time your, your um, the JavaScript, um, sorry, by the time you are back reading the JavaScript to this page, some errors must have encountered. Because one, remember, he didn't bring back the nodules in time to put inside the water. So now, the files you read in the main JS, you didn't bring it back in time to put inside this body section that needs those lines of code. Then there's going to be consequences. I don't know if that makes sense. It may yeah, not yeah. make sense. It does? Yes. Oh, that's great then. That's great then. But don't worry, when we start maybe doing building, doing um, a lot of things, you get to see all these consequences, right? Um, let me see. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to take us far and create some confusion. So basically, um, that's why for now, I'm advising that you put it in the body section at the bottom side of it, right? But I'm not saying you can't put it here. If you put it in here, there's still a, a solution around it. There are some, some attributes called a sync or differ that you're going to, or differ, there are some attributes, so differ, I think something like this, that you go, you can make use of here, right? But we're still going to come to all that um, during the course of the class. Mind you, today is more or less an introduction, right? So basically this is like using, a, adding an external sheet, right? So what we did here was just an external sheet. And then we, because we console.log, we console.log, console .log. that's why we're able to see this output, this output here in our console of the browser, right? Okay, let me go come back here. Remember, right, in commenting, right? Let me comment, forward slash to comment. This is like, the, this was the commenting we talk about, two forward slash comment, right? Let me see, let me go and check the browser now, you see, I will, you see what's happening? It just said, hello, dot, I, I heard you are a full stack dev because I commented a section. I commented name. And so it's not reading this name again. Remember we said comment that are unexecutable lines of code. I didn't delete it, it's still on this page, but I turned it into a comment. So JavaScript, yeah, you saw this thing, but already from the beginning I told you, hey, Bro, this is a comment, ignore this line. So he ignored it completely and only read this and this. And that's why he did not recognize this name here, right? Hope that makes sense. So now if I want to comment multiple lines, talking about comment now, you could, this is forward slash asterisk and this, right? Oh, sorry, I used the shortcut. So if you want to go the normal route, this is like forward slash asterisk. And then where you want to end it, forward slash asterisk again. Let me save this and go and check what's happening in the browser. 
you see it's throwing an error an error right occupation is not defined it doesn't know what occupation is it's not defined because you made use of occupation here but you didn't see what occupation was because i commented it out so basically that's just how comment multiple line work comment works and single line comments work right so now okay um let me remove the comments but another thing i'm going to do now is i want to cut this code right there's nothing again on this place like let me go and write this same code in my so that was us trying to illustrate um external scripts right so for internal let me comment this we're no longer using it for internal now this is like me coming here to write remember for style you just say you're going to write style and you put all your de de declarations in between this place right for scripts for javascript you're just going to write scripts and then you put all your um your script codes here here you see this is internal right script so let me check the browser you see it's my code still works hello sam i heard you are a full stack dev that's using internal we have used external now what about inline let's say i have a function here let me put a button instead i have a function here let me use the button let me give it a name called click me and then i say something like um on click this is a function on click is just a function on click a lot wow <laughs> I've, I've used so much of of um what do we call it i've used so much of of real yeah, yes, sorry we understand i've used so much of react that when i got it i was thinking of what to do <laughs> it's so funny right okay it's something like um you put here on click um can i do this a lot a lot hello guys I save this guy now. Let me go back. Okay, this is the button, right? Yeah, I'm not using this guy for now. Let me click, click on click. You see the alert message brought out. Hello, guys. So that was like a click event. A click, hello. And there are a whole lot of other events you can use, right? Click, yeah. Alert just brings out that pop up, right? There are other ones I can say confirm. Uh, confirm then I can confirm it's like you asking the question I'll be like okay um are you enjoying okay this one okay say okay say okay say okay say okay if you are enjoying the class uh, let's go and then my browser i click you now see say okay now there's an okay button remember the alert just pop up the message so i could now click okay that's trying to get a confirmation right and uh, you, when we are writing code going forward we can target that event and know actually what that person if the person clicks an okay we should be able to proceed um, with, um, let's say if the person click, okay, something else should happen, right? So can monitor all those events, right? So basically this is like, we just wrote uh, JavaScript on the line. This is in line, we wrote JavaScript in the section, right? In the, in the file, this is internal, right? And then we tried connecting JavaScript externally, and we looked at um, commenting um, single lines and multiple lines, right? So um, I don't know if anybody have any questions. We, we have already gone into our times so almost ten thirty. Um, maybe in the next class we we'll, should be doing. We're going to do more. We'll look into different data types, and then we'll do a whole lot of other stuff, right? Cool stuff. 
basically today was just more or less an introduction and to be sure you guys um we, um sorry from my end i didn't do a reminder in time so i was even skeptical if you guys are going to join the class but anyway thank you so much for making our time to join the class um it was more or less an introduction promise you in the next class we are going to enjoy javascript because we'll be we'll be going a bit one step for that deeper and i'll make sure i break it to the barest minimum so that anybody can understand yeah i got your message something thank you boss you're welcome Hello, thank you so much. yes do you have any question Um, yes, line, no okay, line 12, sorry. Line 12? Yes. On okay. That button, on click, confirm, say okay if you are entering the class. That place now, when you now went to the browser, hmm. I heard it. The okay, the okay thing now. Oh, I'm not hearing you again. Hey. Hello? Yes, can I, I can hear you me? now. Yes, yes. I said the okay app so it it automatically adds it as in JavaScript yes. adds it automatically. One can now click okay, I'm enjoying it, or okay, I'm not. Yeah, that's why there's it counts. That thing it it returns either a true or false. If you say okay, it means your response okay. was true. If it's cancel, it means your response was false. So is this confirm that comes with that? Okay. Now remember if I use a lot, a lot just pops up the message for us. Let me, I've changed it to alert. Let me click on it, you see, alert. You see, there's no counsel. This okay here is just more like closing the model, right? But let me go back and use confirm here. You see, confirm. This confirm returns either a true or a false. Can you see, okay, counsel. All right. So if you click okay, it means the response is returning is, a true response. True response, okay. We can, right. in fact, we can even see that. Let me try to see if we could implement that. Uh, I, I'm trying so hard not to go. Um, okay, let me just try to see if I can do something. Real quick no, you don't so need you to go to the three. Yeah, go I'm trying so hard not to, no. so, that I'll, so that I'll go step by step, right? But let me just try this. I yeah, think this should yes, make sense. Let's understand. say I do something like, I do something like const decision. Decision is equal to. Oh no! See, I may go. I may go. I may. Go. Yeah, I may go a bit far because I may have to target this button and add an event on it. Okay. Okay. So I'm good. I'm good for now. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, bro. Thank you. Welcome. Any other question before we jump off the call for today? Uh, no question really, but I just want to ask. There are right. um, some developers I've seen using main.js, using um, script.js and uh, index.js. What yes. is your different function? It's, it's just a name convention. Like this thing you see here, it's just a name. This main.js is just a name. Okay. But most times when somebody refers to us, main it's like that's the main javascript handling the the main that's like um referring to um how am i going to put this guy now it's like the main file that's it there, there could be other javascript file right but there's a main file okay, okay. you understand then you could see them called they call it main then you could see them call it index okay so those words index it's it's some like for html though if you're coming from a php background if you call um the name of a folder in fact yeah it works even in, in, Java, in javascript like if there's an index file in the folder you just call that folder by default the index takes charge okay it's, okay. it's like entering a house and asking um it's like entering a house and asking who is the father of this house by default your father is going to stand up not your not you or your mom, or your sister, or your younger ones. That's yeah. like the head of the house. Who is the head of this house? Definitely our dad will stand up, right? Because yes. he's the head. So now it's like when you call a particular folder, then the, the index file just pop up. When you give any file index.html, the file just pop up that, oh, I'm the, I am the, I'm the head of the house, or oh, I'm the head of the folder. That's what it means. Okay, all right, yeah. don't understand that. Yeah. 
Thank you. Welcome. So in absence of any question, I don't know sir, if the sir, sir, I still have a, a question. Hi, please go on. When you when you were writing a code in a browser, yes. then you use you use console.log. Then after the console.log, there was a bracket. Then the first one you wanted to print, there was a, a semi, there was a, what do they call it? There was two uh, distinct semicolon, the semicolon also. Then the, the second one, there was no semicolon. Okay. Um... Hello, are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you, I'm trying to go. Okay, maybe something like, oh, there was a semicolon, like maybe I do something like console. Okay, now talking about now talking about semicolons, right? You see, yes. when you write a sentence, you put a full stop, right? Okay. Right? When if you write a sentence, you put a full stop. That's in normal or normal conventional English, right? Yes. And so while somebody is reading your sentence and see full stop, the person knows that, oh, this is the end of the sentence. Now in programming, semicolon it stands is still serving that same that same purpose of our full stop. It shows that this is the end of this statement. Yeah, for okay. some uh, now um it's yeah if you look at this code now see there's a semicolon here there's a semicolon here right. Okay. Yeah, but ideally that's the right path to go right. But um some of these languages are sort of JavaScript sometimes is such that it, it even helps you ignore some of those things. But now, even without the semicolon, my JavaScript codes are going to work. But if I save it now, it's going to insert it back for me. It's because uh, it's the VS code on my system. Sorry, it's the extension of my system, Prettier, that inserts those semicolon for me by default. OK. I hope that makes sense. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So, so another one is a that inside that that double quotes. Is there any way you can use double quotes? Is there any way you cannot use double quotes? Oh, the double quotation, right? Yeah, you can yes, use sir. double quotation and single quotation. There's another part. do in our next class we're going to look at all those things, right? When we're talking about different data types, I will illustrate it. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, welcome. Um, so, I don't know if the course coordinator is still uh, the, um, the coordinator is on the call. Any other question? Um, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, so concerning the uh, font ensemble in the previous class, because while during the assignment, I discover whenever I stop and probably follow uh, the following day, if I get back, those icons will like they will not appear until I had to go and copy that my key again and input before they will not appear. No, if you want so you, as long you, as you as long as you link that that script, did you put that script? Once you put that script in the head section, it's not supposed to go right. But remember that yes, is making use of internet. If you do not have internet, if you're not connected to internet, that's where that's the situation whereby you not see those icons. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm always on to internet, but I, it, it has happened like three, three to four times, Sha, that whenever I get back to my project, it tends to have disappeared. Then I had to go and copy that script that the heading one, the one I had at the heading before those icon will now resurface. Is anybody having that same issue? No, it's, it's only internet. When you are not connected to yes. the internet, you will not don't see the worry. icon. But, okay, what will happen now? If it happens again and don't do anything, just draw my attention. Okay, no problem, sir. So that I will, I will, I will see get back to it this video. night. I will, I will notify you tomorrow. Okay, that's awesome. That's great. Thank you very no, much, Mr. sir. All right, all right, thank you very much. Any other question? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes. So, that this thing, that, uh, that search bar, I asked of yesterday, uh, the first day. Yes. Which you do justice to it. Now, yes. if you if you click that search bar, mm. the, the the this thing, the search icon mm. will, will come out, but mm. it will not go. It will not go again. All those, things can, 
Yeah, it was, you know, then I was just trying to show you um, a basic illustration on how to go about this thing, right? We can correct our invent so that, you know, that the, we, we, the invent we use was on click. We can yes, use invent like, um, we can still put another event like um, on mouse out or on blow. On blow simply means that that particular input tag doesn't have a focus. Like there's nobody, like there's no click. Nobody's trying to type there. That's on blow. So when okay. that input is on block, hide back that thing. Okay. So that there are so there are a lot of ways we can go about that. Thing. There are a whole lot of ways. No problem, sir. If I want to start JavaScript properly, you get to understand all those things. You see, they are fun to play with. JavaScript is so sweet, trust me. <laughs> okay, sir. No problem. And it's, it's very simple too. <laughs> Um, something said no, we didn't get the YouTube class video. The YouTube class video is on, is on the WhatsApp group. Yes. I can hear you. I thought someone wanted Hello, to someone. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I yes, it's me, RF. Okay, yes, RF. Yes. 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 This is my problem of um, this thing. I don't know if you can schedule a meeting. Okay, and that's fine. Just, mm, um, so okay. I can okay. watch my work. Okay, I'll, I'll check. I'll, I'll, I'll schedule a meeting, a private meeting with you tomorrow. All right, all right. Will you be available by, by 10? Will you be available by 10 a.m.? 10, 10, 10 a.m. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. Once you said, drop the message. Okay, okay. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Welcome, bro, welcome. All right, guys. All right, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Um, I don't know if the cost, if they, um, the coordinator is there. Mr. Banji. Hello, Mr. Banji. Um, I don't know. Hello, Mr. Banji, I see there. Um, sorry guys, let me try to draw his attention. I'm not sure if he has anything to say. Yeah, good evening. I'm okay, guys. Um, the coordinator will join us. I'm sorry, he was in a meeting. Hello, Mr. Banja. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you. What's up? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Fine, sir. Okay, so you guys are done for tonight, right? Yeah, we are done for today. So um, I said the other.